I've heard it's pretty hard hitting, but I'm up for some emotional trauma during reading. Why not? I keep having those moments where I just like put the book down and like stare off into space and have an existential crisis. Like the idea of Ben Shapiro holding onto all his ridiculous, racist, sexist, conservative ideals while struggling to survive on Mars is one that does appeal to me. Hello friends, my name is Katie and welcome back one more time for another reading vlog. And I thought we could get started with The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. This is a book that I've had on my shelf for a little while and one that I've been meaning to get to, just I have been a little bit intimidated by its size and I think now is the perfect opportunity to dive right in. And from what I've heard, this is about New York City coming to life or being born or like people becoming avatars of new, I, I don't know. It sounds weird, but kind of fun. And honestly, I've heard sort of mixed reviews about this. People either love it or hate it. And I think, I have a feeling this might work for me. I love books that feel really in place and really evoke a sense of atmosphere and personality of a city. I'm one of those people who loves cities. I have never read an N.K. Jemisin before, and I've heard so much about her fifth season trilogy and I think if this goes well I would really like to explore that more in the future as well. But for now I've got this one on my shelf so why don't we get started with this one. Hello friends, it's actually been about a week since I started reading The City We Became and honestly I'm not that far into it and I'm kind of struggling. So I'm up to chapter six, I've read 138 pages which for me in the space of a week is not an awful lot. To be fair I was in hospital for part of that but I don't really feel excited to pick it up. So I'm honestly a little frustrated with myself because uh, I thought this was something that I could have a lot of fun with. It is a really weird premise and I do kind of like the idea of the story, I just don't really enjoy the book. And this is one of those things that is quite hard to explain but I'm gonna try. So basically uh, this is a story about New York City and in this world, it's, it's our world but a little bit different, in this world, cities basically reach a point of development or maturation where they are born into living entities. This has happened to some other cities around the world and now it's happening to New York. And part of the birthing process, I think, is basically that uh, the city is sort of born into a human being, into like a representation, into an avatar. Most cities have one person who becomes that avatar, for lack of a better word. In New York, it seems like every borough has its own person. And so these are the characters that we're meeting. We're meeting Manny, who is the manifestation of Manhattan. We're meeting Brooklyn, we're meeting Queens. And so far, it's just such a diverse cast of characters. These people come from all walks of life. Some of them have lived in New York for generations. Others literally moved here a day before. There are a whole host of different intersections of different identities. They're different races, different backgrounds, different classes, different genders, different sexualities. Like it's just a whole mix and it's just awesome to see. And it is sort of fun fun and interesting having different ideas around New York, different mythology of New York and New Yorkers sort of become manifest in these people and exploring the different identities of different boroughs and the different histories of them through people. It's, it's really cool. The magic of this world sort of seems quite nebulous and uncertain, but it seems to be driven by emotions and I suppose stories or like beliefs and ideas about New York and about the self. And while this birthing is happening, there seems to be some, I don't know, big bad magic energy thing that is trying to stop it from happening, um, to kill New York or to stop the birth happening. Um, and so it's, that's sort of the tension is can these people who are becoming the boroughs sort of figure out what's happening and to like help each other to birth New York before the bad thing wins. I think the reason I'm not loving this is twofold, two reasons. Firstly, so far it has felt a little bit repetitive. Um, each chapter or most chapters we've basically met a new person who is becoming a burrow and then we watch them as they sort of figure out what's going on um, and as they like encounter this evil energy and we've sort of seen that with several of the burrows now and so although they do do different things and they're very different characters that sort of structure and idea does feel a little bit repetitive so far but then I think the main thing that is holding me back from like really just enjoying this is that this definitely feels like a book that is more about 
ideas. We have a lot of exploration of a lot of different themes happening already in this book and I am someone who loves exploring themes in my fiction. Like the idea of invasion and of people's right to exist as well as ideas around racism and gentrification and land ownership and like stories and narratives that we tell ourselves about who we are as individuals and as a collective. But my issue with this is that it feels more like I'm reading ideas than I am a story. It's just very on the nose, I suppose. It's all very spelled out and clear for you what the author is talking about in terms of these themes um, and the parallels between, you know, this world and our real world and that commentary. And although I do like that commentary, I'm missing the engagement and like getting lost in a story. So I'm thinking, give myself 24 more hours with this book and if I just can't get along with it, I'm going to try the first book in the fifth season series instead. That series seems to have a bit more mass appeal. Um, it seems to be just highly and widely loved. And so I think I'd be more likely to be able to just enjoy that as a story, as a book. So unfortunately, not a wholly positive update, I'm aware, uh, but I still have high hopes for N.K. Jemisin and me. I feel like we can get along. I just need to find the right book and be in the right headspace. So let's see if we can get there in this video. Okay, so it has been well over 24 hours and I have not made any progress. So it's official. I'm DNFing the city we became. And I'm honestly quite sad about it because I've had this book on my shelf for quite a long time. One of my favorite trips I've ever taken was three weeks in New York City with my mum. And I really, I just really wanted to love this, but gosh, I just, I didn't hate it. Like when I was reading it, it's not like I was mad at it. It's just, I never felt any desire to pick it up. If anything, it was the opposite. Whenever I was sitting down and I'm like, I have time to read and I'd sort of glance over at the city we became and like pretend we didn't make eye contact because I just, I really didn't want to open it and have to slog through another chapter. I just need to accept that at least right now, this is not the book for me and to put it down. So although I can pretty clearly point to elements of this book that aren't working for me, I do still really like the ideas and the themes that are being explored and presented. I just don't love the way that it's so on the nose that it feels like it's all theme and no story, at least at this point. I also really enjoy N.K. Jemisin's voice and her writing. I know that I've heard people sort of say that it's a very strong voice and that you either love it or hate it. I like it. I'm really enjoying the writing itself. So for those reasons, I feel reasonably confident in saying that although the city we became might not be for me, I'm not ready yet to say that N.K. Jemisin is not for me. So I've decided that this vlog is now turning into me trying N.K. Jemisin. That's what this vlog is. We now have a theme and I'm very happy that I managed to find a copy of the Broken Earth trilogy um, for sale secondhand online and it's finally arrived. I hear this series recommended constantly online and I've heard almost nothing but incredible things about it. I think the only criticism I see consistently is that there's some of it written in second person which some people don't like but other than that I've heard it's an incredibly immersive and impactful dystopian sort of fantasy novel series I should say. So I thought for the second half of this vlog we can hopefully turn this around and I can try out the fifth season which is the first book in the Broken Earth trilogy. From what I understand this is set in a world where the fifth season is basically the apocalypse. Like an apocalyptic event happens so often that they have like a name for it. It's considered a season almost. And I think this is sort of taking place in one of those apocalyptic events and the society and the world is sort of set up in a way to deal with and prepare for and handle the aftermath of these fairly regular apocalyptic occurrences. I've heard it's pretty hard hitting, but I'm up for some emotional trauma during reading, why not? I have to say I am quite surprised at the length though. Um, I've seen people talk about these online and I think I just, I assumed that these were much bigger. I mean, it's still, it's still 500 pages, which for me is a big book, but I was expecting bigger. So I'm pleasantly surprised and fairly optimistic. Honestly, after my experience with Brandon Sanderson, I'm just ready to find a fantasy series that I can throw myself into and that I can wholeheartedly recommend and that I love all of the books included in the series. I just, I really want that for me. I hope it can happen. So I'm gonna get to reading and I'll update you in a little bit. How you doing, Harry? You're a good boy. You look very handsome. 
I'm up to chapter 15, which is about page 265. So I'm a little over halfway. There's quite a lot going on and I'm not sure I understand all of it and I'm not sure I'm supposed to yet, but the journey is just so enthralling every step of the way. The fifth season is set in a world where there's just quite a lot of seismic activity, like much more than is common on earth. And so it's fairly common for apocalyptic or really catastrophic seismic events to happen. And so this society and all of its mythology and its law is pretty much set up to prepare for disaster and to deal with it when it happens. In this world, there are also some people who have a magic that is very much connected to the earth and to this seismic activity. And these people are pretty much reviled. They're very much demonized and dehumanized. Some choose to live in secret and like hope that they don't get found out. Others sort of do get discovered and they have to be raised in this kind of society where they're essentially tortured and abused and controlled and then become forced labor. So these people who are called or origin, or origin, I think, and they can harness the magic of orogeny. They are sort of both feared and hated and also necessary. And in this book, we're following three different main perspectives. I don't think that they're all happening at the same time and they haven't really crossed over yet. The very first perspective that we're introduced to is a woman named Isun, Isan, uh, and she is middle-aged and she is living in secret uh, and she's married with children. And basically at some point her husband has figured out that she is one of these orogene er and that probably therefore their children also are or potentially are as well. And we're introduced to Isun when she's coming home and realizing that her husband has murdered their three-year-old son and he's run off and their older daughter is missing. So right away, it's hugely impactful and we get to see just how reviled and feared and just not human these orogene are considered even by their own family members. One of our other perspectives is a little girl who her family has just figured out that she's one of these orogene. I feel like I'm not saying that correctly. And we follow her and her journey as she kind of starts to understand what she is, what these powers are and what it means in the world that she lives in. And she gets sent off to this society, the Fulcrum, to learn how to control her power. And then the third perspective we get is from a woman who is already very much entrenched in this society. She's grown up in this society and she's now been sent out on a new mission. Um, like her labor is being, is required somewhere. And so, oh, you're done, okay. What you doing? You wanna sit on the floor with me? Okay, sorry, I'll move. <laughs> and at least in Eason's perspective and timeline, a cataclysmic event has just occurred. One of these fifth season events has just occurred. And so like the chaos and all of that sort of stuff is starting to happen, but everybody assumes it's going to be a fifth season like all of the other ones that they've been used to and that they've prepared for and last a few years. Whereas Eason seems to think that this is much, much bigger and going to last, like basically gonna be the end of the world. So this is just so intriguing from so many different elements and I am so invested already in all three perspectives that we're getting and in many of the side characters that we're already being introduced to. This just feels so rich and compelling and I feel like N.K. Jemison is just being so clever in how she's revealing things to us. Like we're not, there is no info dumping in this book. We're very much sort of, we get a little bit of a prologue just to get us started. And from there, we're really just, we just dive right in with these characters and we just sort of have to figure stuff out as we go along. And N.K. Jemison definitely gives us enough to keep us going and to keep us feeling like, even if we don't understand everything, at least we're sort of following along with what we need to understand. And the reveals and everything that's just like, the more we learn about this world and this society, I keep having those moments where I just like put the book down and like stare off into space and have an existential crisis. You know those moments when you're reading? And I'm already just having like a roller coaster of emotions. I am just obsessed. This pacing is working so well for me. The world building, everything is just, it feels masterful. Everything feels so intentional and specific and has enough direction, but also enough mystery. It's just, I'm, I'm in awe. I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say other than that I'm in awe, I'm in love, I'm obsessed. And although I can't put it down, I also kind of don't want it to be over. This is everything I wanted fantasy to be when I decided I wanted to try and start reading fantasy. It's just incredible. And I don't really want to talk to you anymore because I want to read this book. So I'm going to keep reading and I will update you probably when I'm finished. 
You can tell she likes a book when she's painted her mails to match the cover. That's right, I did finish the fifth season last night and I adored it. I absolutely adored it. I don't know that I have a huge amount more to say about the book though because I don't want to give you spoilers. There were a few things I had to cut out of my last clip just because of things that I guessed or that I'd sort of figured out. Um, I don't want to spoil this book for you if you do decide to read it and I highly recommend that you do. The way that everything came together in this book was just really clever and so satisfying. The last couple of chapters I was literally like noticing myself holding my breath and not breathing properly because it was so tense and just that final page that final sentence of hinting at what the fuck is going to happen in the next book is just oh captivating. What an incredible accomplishment of a setup for a trilogy with the characters, the world, the magic and the tension and the complexities of the society and the systems and the structures oh my god and although I'm terrified of what's gonna happen next I just I cannot wait to learn more about this world in book two. So a hugely different experience from reading The City We Became to this and I finished this around nine o'clock last night so I decided to listen to the audiobook of Emergency Skin which is a short story by N.K. Jemisin. You know we were on a roll with this one I wanted to see you know just throw in another kind of storytelling that she's done and that she's known for just to see how I got along with that. And just to add to the very roller coaster nature of this video, I didn't like it. And this is a short story so it's hard to talk about without giving spoilers. So spoiler warning for the short story. If you want to read it, go read it before you listen to my thoughts. Emergency Skin, it was about an hour long listen so it's quite short. There's a couple of things I really liked about this. I, I liked the ideas and I really enjoyed the choice of the narration. This is told in second person from the perspective of an AI. Basically a few hundred years ago Earth's climate was collapsing and so a group of people decided that they were going to leave planet Earth and to colonize another planet. All we really know about this planet and what happened comes from the perspective of this AI. And the character that they're speaking to, you, uh, has been sent back to Earth to on like a scientific mission. Once the AI and this main character arrive though, it becomes very evident that Earth has not collapsed. In fact, humanity has managed to survive and is kind of thriving. And then through a series of events, we discover that the uh, planet that uh, this AI and this main character are from are an offshoot of humanity who decided to leave when they thought the climate was collapsing. And it seems like there were a bunch of racist and sexist and douchebag capitalists who don't really believe in basic human rights and equality. And they have very strict views about morality and goodness and beauty. And they're also not doing very well at surviving on this other planet. Meanwhile, humanity back on Earth has thrived in large part because these horrible capitalist, sexist, racist, Nazi pigs left. Basically the moral of the story is that equality is good and when we seek to work together then it's better for everybody. And that the only thing holding us back from that is about 6,000 Nazi douchebags and if we just shot them all off into space everything here would be fine. And as much as I would love to see Elon Musk and his dude bros like fulfill their wet dream of colonizing Mars and leaving us alone, like the idea of Ben Shapiro holding onto all his ridiculous racist, sexist, conservative ideals while struggling to survive on Mars is one that does appeal to me. It was just so on the nose. It was almost comical. So at the end of the day, although the narration style I thought was really clever and interesting and the ideas were fun, the execution I felt was just so overly simplistic that I did just not enjoy this. Which I'm a little sad to say because obviously I adored the fifth season so much but I guess there's definitely correlations between how much I struggled with and why I struggled with this short story and the reasons that I didn't like The City We Became. Because for both of those there's a lot of choices that I really enjoyed and I was excited about the ideas and the themes that were presented to be explored. Both were just so on the nose that it negated any sense of immersion in the storytelling for me. So in this vlog I've tried out three different stories by N.K. Jemisin. The City We Became, The Fifth Season and Emergency Skin. And boy have I had mixed results. We've got a DNF, we've got a five star and we've got a two star. So I'm definitely continuing on with the Broken Earth trilogy because the fifth season was just absolutely incredible. No doubt in my mind that this is a story that's gonna stay with me and that I absolutely wanna spend more time in this world. But beyond the Broken Earth trilogy, I'm honestly not really sure where I stand with N.K. Jemisin. I'm not entirely opposed to trying out some of her other series. I think how keen I am to jump into any of those will definitely depend on just how much I enjoy this series overall by the end. And to be fair, I have heard people 
say that even if they love all of N.K. Jemisin's works, the Broken Earth trilogy is sort of in a league of its own. It is really quite special. And my personal experience certainly aligns with that. In the fifth season, there are so many examples of N.K. Jemisin exploring ideas around race and racism and societal structures and how they harm people and especially with gender as well. I love how she subverts our expectations and our own assumptions about gender. Even little things like right at the beginning um, she mentions a butcher and uses the pronouns her and then I think it's a baker and uses the pronouns he him. Not a big deal but definitely a subversion of our expectations at least in the modern world on earth. And then to take it a step further and refer to planet Earth as Father Earth rather than Mother Earth and to depict an Earth that is seen as quite turbulent and angry rather than nurturing and subdued. And then even just the characters themselves and the relationships that they form and the way that they uh, express themselves in the world. Like I just, I loved this. And what I think she did so well in this book in particular is that the themes, the ideas, they're so strong and they're so present but the storytelling is still at the forefront. The characters do not feel like they've been created just so she can get a point across. The setting and the world feel like it has allowed her to have interesting conversations rather than she sort of shaped them in order to fit the themes and the ideas that she wanted to put across. Like that line of what sort of works with theming and idea exploration definitely is a subjective one. For me, the fifth season is absolutely in that Goldilocks zone where the city we became and emergency skin are not. But those are my thoughts and my experience thus far reading three works from N.K. Jemisin in the last two weeks. I know I have quite a few people who are fans of N.K. Jemisin who've been watching my videos lately so I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you think there maybe is another series or two of N.K. Jemisin or a short story or something that you think, given what I've said in this video, you think I will like? Like for me, this has personally set a new bar for what I want and what I expect out of science fiction fantasy. It is just so good. And I think this will be a favorite of the year and depending on how the rest of the trilogy goes, maybe a favorite of all time. We will see. But that's it for my trying N.K. Jemisin for the first time vlog. Thank you so much for watching and following along with the journey. I hope you enjoyed. And an especially big thank you goes to my patrons over on Patreon. And an especially big thank you goes to Olivia, Lynette Brown, Laurie and Ian Yitzhak for their very generous support. Talk to me in the comments about books and N.K. Jemisin and I will see you in the next video very soon. Until then, happy reading and so much love. Bye.